I picked up the phone and he said, you know, I'm Doc Pomus. I said, oh my God, <laughs> I mean, Doc Pomus. This magic moment, so different and so new, was like any I can't get used to losing you no matter what I try to do. I always thought of Doc, you know, as like writing those great things for like the Drifters or Joe Turner. I thought Doc Pomus was like this black cat from Georgia or something, you know. <laughs> Doc Pomus, I didn't know it's like a Jew from Brooklyn. <laughs> I got polio when I was five, and then uh, from then on, I used to get around braces and crutches. You can dance. I was a singer and actress. I moved into the Broadway Central. The uh, fellow who ran the uh, cigarette and magazine stand said to me, "There's a man here who um, may be able to help you." So I looked over and I saw this man sitting in a chair. And he, he waved. I waved back. I didn't know who he was. Sometimes when I would wake up in the morning, I would find a note under my door. Beautiful poems that he started to write to me. And that's very, that's very romantic. Cause don't forget who's taking you home and in whose arms you're gonna be. So darling, say the last dance for me. I always believed in magic and flying. And then one morning I would wake up and all the bad things were bad dreams. And I would get out of the wheelchair and walk. And I would walk down all the streets and no one would stare at me. And young girls in see-through dresses would smile at me, dazzled by my appearance and glow. You see, to me, I was always interested in proving that I was able to do anything I wanted to do. So it was a question of making a choice between being a professional fighter, or being a baseball player, or a band leader, or a singer. Now mind you, this was all going to be done on braces and crushes, you know? And you found the real.